All right, so here is hopefully the final test of the tachometer system, which consists of the tiny tack PZO amplifier, and it takes a signal from the piezo piezo sensor right there that clamps to the number one uh, cylinder and obviously all this has to be secured so it's just testing right now and then we have that is the um, JEGS TAC electronic TAC digital TAC that is the Dakota digital um, TAC adapter and so what everything does of course is that provides essentially and this is not adjustable on this but this provides a one cylinder four stroke signal out uh, using that uh, piezo sensor so there's no adjustments on this it's just going to provide a tack signal out uh, if you had a two stroke diesel I think where maybe there was one pulse per revolution on the fuel pipe you would get a two cylinder or two cycle uh, signal um, then the JEGS tachometer which is a gas tachometer and it can be adjusted for one cylinder two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So from one to twelve cylinders. No, it's just FYI. There's no setting for a uh, three-cylinder. In case you have like a three-cylinder Yanmar or something like that. Um, like I used to have my tractor, so this would not work on the tractor. But anyways, and this is a TAC adapter. Or TAC, uh, there's another name How for about it. about Mike Fox? Mike Fox. Signal interface. So, uh, that will take any tack signal from a one cylinder to a 12 cylinder and convert it uh, to anything else in that range. So if you have a 12 cylinder and you want to, you only have a tack that runs on a one cylinder signal, you can convert it that way. But if you have, say, uh, you know, most often what's used is if you have a tack that's for an eight cylinder and you have a four cylinder signal, um, then you can. Um, adapt that so for a four cylinder signal you can adapt it for an eight cylinder tack six cylinders common and you know six and eight cylinder as well but then what this also does is it has a fine tuning adjustment which I did end up using a very small correction factor of 1.005 or seven I can't remember what I finally ended up on and uh, that put it within about 10 rpm of uh, the actual RPM as measured with the optical digital tachometer so we'll we'll do that here in just a minute um, so everything is just this is just obviously temp wired in there this will be behind the dash uh, there's no reason to keep this out once it's set you really shouldn't have to to mess with it now just for someone else's uh, information you could have gotten the tiny tack PZO amplifier and which is I think $150 and just this tack and then set this on one cylinder four stroke actually it's just one cylinder um, and that did work but it was off by about 20 rpm so I used that very small correction factor to get it as close as I could without going over or skewing the whole range you know because if you skew if you, if you get everything perfectly accurate at 700 RPMs, it may or may not be off at 1500 RPMs and may or may not be off more at 3000 RPMs. You know, you have to kind of hit the um, hit the middle and aim for, say, 1500 RPM, you know, or, wherever, or, or if you want to, wherever you operate. If you operate at 2000 RPMs all the time, set your tack to be as accurate as possible at 2000 RPMs. But either way, with this setup, with these three items, this is apparently, and we'll test it, apparently within about 10. Uh, sometimes it's dead on, sometimes it's about 10 off. But let's, uh, let's see what happens here. So when you power it up, this goes into test mode, and it goes through all those uh, modes that I showed earlier. Um, and that does nothing but just power on. So we'll start it up, and we'll see... Look for that green signal, the green LED. Okay, the green LED's on right there. We have a good signal. 
we have a nice steady tachometer signal which does respond let's see okay so got oil pressure all right let's check a few things out Okay, we got our optical tack. There's a tape on that. This is going to be difficult. Let's see here. So that's about 11 off. Let's bump up the throttle a little bit. Okay, we got 11.50, and obviously this is the this will be maxed out at 4,000 RPM. That's how it sets. So we got 1194 and 1210 so we're off about uh, now that digit that 10 digit could be as low as 1205 or 1206 because it the last digit isn't uh, you know it's it's just rounded so we're getting a little interference here might need to tighten the clamp on the amplifier the 1210 let's bump it up a little bit Fourteen hundred. so we're 40 off so I'll probably have to apply some more correction factor uh, to get that a little closer um, however let me okay so the, the only problem is uh, I can't do that right now because I have to use a Bluetooth app so I have to shut down the phone and what I'm recording on to adjust that but I'll adjust it a little bit more get a little closer but it does work I am happy with it the signal is very steady it doesn't drop out like the other one uh, here's the old tack a little bit beat up um, I've got a new hour meter and I'll have to placard it something like that uh, to change and document it in the log books um, that this was changed out and what the current hours are on the motor and then total time on the, the, the vessel itself so, uh, but I am happy with it. I'll have to play with it just a little bit more to get it to be more accurate. <laughs> have to get it, uh, have to play with it a little bit more on the correction factor to get it to be a little bit more accurate. But I am happy with it. It wasn't, you know wasn't the most direct path to get a working and solid tack and I'm really not done yet but it's light years ahead of where it was because when I you know as I was pulling back the throttle there in, in this video that tack signal would have jumped all around and I've tried loading it up with the DC circuits you know to try to kick the alternator to uh, more output 
and it never really helped. It, it helped maybe just a little bit, but it was very erratic, jumped around a lot. Uh, so obviously I need to secure all this wiring and how it's run and all this stuff and then clean everything up again and, and uh, tidy up the wires behind this. Behind this is a little bit of a mess. Um, it is, this is a very small helm box here. Um, I may build another one. You know, I've got a lot of stuff stuffed into here. These switches, I didn't put any of these switches in. And these need to be cleaned up. And I don't like the positioning of them, blah, blah, blah. Um, I've taken some things out. This used to be a voltmeter. Now it's a fuel filter water monitor. Um, this is the voltmeter now. It's digital. Still have the oil pressure and temperature, of course. And then over here we got a timer for the dry bilge. And then a uh, um, gallons per hour meter. Uh, that I installed in another video that works pretty good. That, that that needs to be calibrated as well. It does read, but you do. There is a calibration. A lot of people don't know, but there's a calibration factor for that. Um, but anyways, uh, that's it. I am going to go do a few more things while I'm here, and then uh, I think that's it for now. This old boat is coming around a little bit here and there. Long way to go at least to be up to to my standards which aren't even that high but uh, you know boat's a mess again so get the stereo in AC's cranking it's very hot today Memorial Day weekend but uh, alright let me tidy this stuff up and uh, put the boat back together for the 400th time